Who should you be targeting in round two of your rookie drafts? We're talking all that and more on today's episode of Locked On Dynasty. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Matt Williamson and Ryan McDowell. Thanks for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Locked On today to get 10% off your first month. Welcome to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan McDowell. You can follow me on Twitter at RyanMC23. Joining me, as always, is Matt Williamson. Find Matt on Twitter at WilliamsonNFL. Matt, how's it going today? It's going well. How about you? Things are good here. Yeah. You know, our, our listeners know that I am a teacher uh, during uh, most of my days, most of my uh, waking time, it feels like, and uh, the school year is winding down. So it's it's my favorite nah. uh, favorite time of year. We've got rookie drafts. We've got the school year coming to a close in a few weeks. So, yeah, I'm, I'm doing great, actually. Ryan, how old are you again? I am 47. I've got, okay. I've got okay. uh, wrapping up year 24 of teaching. So, wow. Yeah, I've, I've just got a few more years and uh, maybe I'll be doing dynasty and locked on and everything else full time in, in a few years. So do you look forward to the end of the school year more as a 47 year old or <laughs> a 10 year old? Um, yeah, I think, I, I think the teachers, the teachers are definitely looking forward to summer as, as much as the students, uh, <laughs> for, for different reasons though, probably. All right. Uh, as I said, it's not just, uh, the end of the school year, but it is dynasty rookie draft season. And that's what we're, what we are really focusing on this week on, uh, locked on dynasty. I know Kate and Marcus talked about the first round of dynasty rookie drafts, focusing on those super flex drafts. We're looking at ADP from actual rookie drafts. These are not from mock drafts. These are not our rankings. This is what is actually happening in super flex rookie drafts. They talked, uh, talked through the first round yesterday. So we're going to pick up where they left off and look at the players that are coming off the board in round two of a super flex dynasty rookie draft. We'll be talking about players uh, currently, with an ADP between 13 and 24. And Matt, there's a, a there's a lot of interesting names here for sure. Yeah, very much so. And I, I've been doing this for a while. You've been doing it longer and you're more the specialist in dynasty. It's still a little early in the process. Do these yep. ADPs change a fair amount over the next month? Um, I would say not so much over the next month. I think, okay. uh, you know, we're still settling in. We're still analyzing some of the surprises as far as draft capital or, you know, this wide receiver was drafted ahead of this one, which was a surprise. This player um, maybe was a guy we didn't necessarily like, but he got an ideal landing spot. I think, we're, sure. I think dynasty players are still um, figuring all of that out, honestly. Now, once we get to... Uh, training camp and and some of that hype, uh, just like it changes uh, changes ADP of uh, veterans, it it changes rookie ADP. So if if you have one of those really late rookie drafts, we're talking uh, late July uh, mm -hmm. into August, and and of course I would say the more casual leagues are more likely to have a late rookie draft. Uh, we'll see we'll see ADP vastly different than what we're going to talk about today. Okay, that all adds up. Okay, very cool. Let's go through. I, I want to start here. Yeah, I want to start here, but just by listing the names here. Again, these are players uh, 13 through 24 in current Superflex rookie ADP in a typical 12 team league. That's that's your full second round. Um, and, and I'll just list the names here so, uh, so you at home can play along, uh, find your player that is undervalued, that is overvalued. That's what we're, what we are really going to focus on today. 13th, 2.01 is Zach Charbonnet, the Seahawks uh, brand new running back. He is in that 2.01 spot. 14 overall, 2.02, .02, Michael Mayer, the Raiders tight end. 15th overall, Kendra Miller, running back of the New Orleans Saints. 
Jonathan Mingo, he's one of those players that got the surprising draft capital. He's at 16 overall, the uh, Panthers wide receiver, 17 overall. This would be the 2.05. Sam Laporta, Lions tight end, also came off the off the board a little earlier than some might have expected. 18th overall, middle of the second round, Roshan Johnson, uh, Bears running back. 19th overall, Rashi Rice of the Kansas City Chiefs. 20th, to, uh, 20th overall is Tajay Spears. 21, Josh Downs, 22, Marvin Mims, 23, the quarterback five in the class, according to most people, is Hendon Hooker, and 24 overall, the last player we'll focus on today is Tank Bigsby, the Jaguars running back. So 12 names there for you, Matt. Um, And I think this conversation, again, we're going to focus on players that we think are overvalued or undervalued. And it's a tough conversation with this yeah. group because at least in my opinion, it's one big tier from, and you can, you can find some small gaps in value or uh, players that you clearly prefer one to another. But for the most part, this entire second round is, is one large tier. So it's, it's tough to identify a player as, as overvalued or undervalued, but that's what we're going to try to do today. So Matt, let's, let's start, uh, let's start with players we're maybe a little concerned with when it comes to their ADP. Do you see one guy here that you think is overvalued? Let me throw one thing at you first though, if you don't mind is you mentioned it's all one big tier. We had a very good Zach Charbonnet conversation last week, you know, that Mm -hmm. boys landing spot really hurt him. Is he still clearly your third running back or is he, much is he even fourth. I mean, obviously he's closer to four than two. Where where do you have him in your running back ranks? He's still my third, but tentatively. Yeah, I, honestly, I've the the further we get away from the NFL draft, the more I wouldn't say I like the landing spot. There's mm-hmm. still you know it's it's still tough for for some obvious reasons. Uh, but I feel a little more confident in Zach Charbonnet. You know, we've heard some comments from Pete Carroll. Um, I don't think they're viewing him as the obvious backup or, or the obvious uh, plan B to Kenneth Walker. So that makes me feel a little more confident in him. Uh, our ADP does not have Charbonnet as the RB3. Um, you know, again, Kate and Marcus talked about those first rounders yesterday, and it was obviously Bijan Robinson and Jameer Gibbs mm-hmm. as the top two guys. Uh, but Devon A. Chain snuck in. Uh, that twelfth overall spot, so just just right ahead of Charbonnet as the RB three. So our data says uh, A chain is the RB three. I think I've still got Charbonnet in my own personal rankings as that third guy. Yeah, I, I do as well. I said tentatively, but I was still was a little shocked that we we're talking about him, not them. Yesterday, I figured he'd still be a top twelve player. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And and again, we'll we'll see that ADP change. Um, I said it wouldn't change much over the next six weeks or so. That is one change I do kind of expect is Zach Charbonnet to move back up into the first round, whether mm-hmm. that comes at the expense of uh of A chain spot, of Will Levis's spot. You know, we'll we'll kind of see how that shakes out. But yeah. uh if you tell me in a month and six weeks that Zach Charbonnet is going in the first round. That would not surprise me okay. at all. And I was shocked that a chain's not in this group as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, could, could certainly flip spots. I know, uh, I know a chain was a guy you had some concerns about uh, pre-draft and, did, and even post-draft. Uh, love the landing that, spot. Though. Yeah. Even with that nice landing spot. Yeah. Matt, any player okay. here that is, uh, that's overvalued that you're probably staying away from. There's two. I'm not a big in for don't, don't steal reason. mine. Okay. I'll just give one. <laughs> then. I know I won't steal yours because I know you love this player and I like him a lot too, but I think Roshan Johnson competing with two similar backs makes me very hesitant to take him over Spears, a chain Bigsby, I can't use a mid second rounder on Johnson, even though I like him a lot as a player. Yeah, that's fair. You you did steal mine, but I think you might, really? you might have like... stolen you might have stolen my undervalued guy that I was going to talk about. Um, 
I, I do. I do love Roshan Johnson. You're right about that. Uh, of course, competing with Khalil Herbert, competing with uh, Deontay Foreman, who's had a kind of an under the radar solid couple of uh, of years the past two years as as he came back from that injury. I, I mean, ultimately, I, I just don't think those two backs are anything special. And I mean, I'm not I'm not confident yeah. that Roshan Johnson is is a special back either. Um, but I do think he could be, uh, he could overtake both of those guys. I think he, uh, you, you can make an argument that he's the most talented and the most well-rounded back of the three. Um, so yeah, he's, he's still my favorite, uh, certainly in that Chicago backfield. And, uh, one of the guys that I love grabbing in the second round. So yeah, you, you did steal my, wow, I'm uh, shocked because I know you love him. You, well, you, no, no. I was going to say you stole my undervalued. Player. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but we can. Yeah, it's okay to have the Roshan Johnson conversation early. Um, I mean, how do you see that backfield? Uh, That's a part. Do I don't really know. I'm a big Herbert believer. I like Johnson, and Foreman's played quite well lately. I mean, I think Foreman's the least valuable of the three, clearly for dynasty. Sure. But Fields is going to pillage a lot of rushing touchdowns too. And I know they'll run the ball well, but enough to support four runners. I mean, I, yeah. I just, that this doesn't add up to me. So it sounds like you're mostly I think Herbert's staying, my favorite. You're mostly just staying away from the bears backfield then. Yeah. I mean, I own Herbert in a lot of leagues and the little I've tried to move them. I'm not getting the value I want because people realize that it's getting crowded but he's my favorite of the group. I mean, if that makes sense. I mean, I don't think he like has to go off my roster, but I'm trying to avoid them, but I own a big piece of it already. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, right after this, I will, uh, I'll share my, my player that is a little bit overvalued one I'm staying away from. So I had a lot of experience. Or I had a lot of success actually um, going to a therapist, working on my mental health, things like that. And it's been 10 years since I've gone or something along those lines. And, and frankly, I don't know why I even stopped. The life just kind of got in the way, got busy with football season or whatever it was. So, you know, the, the more I think about it, especially now with better help being a, a partner of Locked On, I, I'm thinking about starting going back. And if you're thinking as well, give better help a try. I mean, what's great about it, which I would have loved back in the day, is it's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient flexible it's super easy to get you know, work around your schedule you can do it whenever you want really all you gotta do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge so um here's what you do find more balance in your life with better help visit betterhelp.com slash locked on that's locked on all one word all caps and you get 10 percent off your first month which is a nice savings that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Matt, let's continue talking overvalued and undervalued. You're a little concerned about Roshan Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, my my overvalued player is maybe one that will surprise you a little bit. This is where I thought you were going to go earlier. Uh, because this is a player I liked uh, quite a bit in, in the pre-draft process, but I, I, I'm learning that I really liked his ADP uh, when he was a fourth rounder, a third mm. rounder. Now Jonathan Mingo is the fourth Ooh. pick in the second round. Great. So, I like yeah, I like the player. I mean, we, we talked about him quite a bit pre-draft. And uh, again, that's when he had an ADP in the 40s or 50s. Uh, not not 16 overall. So uh, kind of hinted at this when I mentioned the name earlier, but uh, he, he goes in the second round to Carolina. You know, a, a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a messy spot there, certainly uh, opportunity for sure. But this is uh, this is a team that's still going to be pretty bad, uh, certainly for this year and, and maybe for the next couple of years. Uh, but at the same time, they've added some veterans, you know, do do Thielen, do, do Char, does Chark or Thielen get in the way there? Uh, I don't know. Um, I just, I don't love the the value jump here for Jonathan Mingo. I'd, I'd feel a lot more comfortable if he was uh, more like a late second rounder down where we see guys like uh, Josh Downs, Marvin Mims. And honestly, I prefer those two wide receivers over Mingo, even mm. though he was 
uh, even though he was drafted above them. Mingo is my wide receiver five behind the first rounders. And I think he's closer to four than he is to six. So once again, we're going to disagree, which is fun. We don't do that enough. Yeah, that's okay. I, yeah, I, I think he fits the modern day NFL really well. Big power slot, great tester. Um, old, I mean, I, I, I know this is scouting the helmet and that's a, a no-no pretty much in the scouting world, but I think it's all right. I mean, you know, Metcalf and A.J. Brown coming from that same situation, especially A.J. Brown. I, I see some similarities in their game. I like Bryce Young enough, and I like the idea of the two of them coming in together. I don't think Chark and Thielen are any, what, what worries me more about Chark and Thielen is next year they go spend a ton of money on whoever the biggest free agent is, you know, and Mingo becomes right. the two where – uh, even the two, though, in this offense, I'm a Mingo believer. I think he's a really good prospect. Uh, I saw a tweet. It was actually on draft weekend uh, soon after Jonathan Mingo got drafted. This came from ZWK football. Uh, if you're not following him, uh, make sure you change that because he's uh, always got a, some great information. The lowest college college yards per route run for uh, day one or two that's a uh, wide receivers drafted in the first three rounds mm -hmm. uh, i'm not sure what the uh, time span is here because most of these guys are recent so we might be talking about the past five or ten years um, but again lowest yards per route run 1.42 for josh palmer was the lowest uh, jonathan mingo is next on that list 1.48 other names on the list with a low yards per route run, Jalen Hurd, Terry McLaurin, Van Jefferson, DK Metcalf, Chase Claypool, Tyquan Thornton, Dante Pettis, Miles Boykin, Devin Duvernay, Terrace Marshall, and Amari Rogers. So hmm. we've got a couple of hits there, DK Metcalf, Terry McLaurin, obviously, but we've got a lot of misses uh, and a lot of wasted second and third round dynasty rookie picks in these names. And, uh, I mean, that one stat it, it should not be enough to scare you off of Jonathan Mingo. I, I don't think any one stat should, you know, should get us on or off of a player. Mm -hmm. But it's not a good sign either. It's not good company no. to keep. You said it's routes, yards per route run, right? Yes. Yeah. I think that's my favorite NFL receiver stat. So I do put a lot of credit in in that more than other stats. But I will say, and I'm defending my side of this, of course, because I'm a Mingo believer. I saw a lot of bubble screens on tape. I mean, I, I didn't think he was asked to drive the ball downfield all that much. In a college, I just don't know enough about their system, their pass protection, their quarterback. Why was that? I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, certainly messy. Uh, again, I like the player. We talked about him a ton on here uh, pre-draft and, and love the value. I, I suggested I thought he would – uh, even sneak into the second round. Even I didn't think he would he would end up this high mm -hmm. in this ADP data, but but here he is. Um, we are going to continue uh, this conversation about second rounders, and we'll talk about uh, some players that we like, some players that are undervalued. Right after this. Thanks for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. Everydayers, be sure to check out tomorrow's show when we are back talking about round three of Dynasty Rookie Drafts. We'll talk about overvalued, undervalued players and our targets in that third round. Matt, let's continue the conversation about round two. I'm going to read these names one more time. Again, okay. play along as you're listening. Players that you think are undervalued. That's our next topic. Charbonnet, Mayer, Kendra Miller, Mingo, Laporta, Roshan Johnson, Rice, Spears, Downs, Mims, Hooker, and Bigsby. Matt, who is the player that you think is undervalued from this group? So I had more overvalued than undervalued of these 12. Okay. So I, I had three or four names on that. My favorite undervalue, and I keep moving them around my board, is Tank, Tank Bigsby. Uh, and for him to be last year, I would take him ahead of Roshan. He's right there with Spears for me, behind Miller, um, right around the A-chain neighborhood. And I know ATN is frightening, but I just think they're very, very different players. Mm -hmm. And 
big backs score fantasy points and I think he's a good enough receiver and I really liked his tape. I thought he got a lot of yardage on his own, a good tackle breaker, didn't have very good blocking. And I don't think it's a terrible landing spot. Yeah, it, it's an interesting landing spot because uh, there there wasn't much there uh, beyond Travis Etienne. And, and I think mm-hmm. he ended up playing um, closer to that workhorse role than anyone might have expected. Uh, but he really struggled to, to catch the ball. And I uh, guess yeah. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that they added a back like Bigsby versus someone. And you said he's he's good enough as a as a pass catcher out of the backfield. I, th- I thought they might have, if they're going that running back route, might have looked for someone who was a more established receiver. But maybe I mean maybe yeah. Bigsby becomes that potentially. Um yeah, I, I like the Bigsby call. I think, you know, looking at the other running backs in this range, uh, Ty J Spears is in the second round, along with Roshan Johnson, Kendra Miller. It feels like we kind of know the Ty J Spears story here. I mean, he's going to have to wait. He's going to have to wait for Henry to go, whether that happens this offseason or if it's a year from now. Um, Roshan Johnson, we already talked about kind of a muddy situation there. Kendra Miller, same thing uh, with the, uh, the possible Alvin Kamara uh, suspension along with uh, Jamal Williams being brought in. So, um, you know, you're not getting any runaway starters in the second round no, range. No. If, if that's the situation, they would, they would be a much higher and we would have talked about them in that first round group, but yeah, I don't, I don't mind the tank Bigsby gamble certainly with, with the last pick in the uh, in the second round here. Uh, Matt, I, I I didn't want to, uh, you know, I didn't want to overlook your work here. You said you had some other guys that are overvalued. You talked about Roshan, uh, Roshan Johnson. Who else are you a little, a little iffy on when it comes to their value in the second round? Um, well, I have Laporta over Mayer, uh, okay. just in my tight end ranks. But they're, I, I knew, I, I knew yeah. we'd get some Michael Mayer shade here. Yeah, <laughs> but I do like his landing spot. I mean, yeah. I, I, so he. He was fifth for me going into the draft. Now he's third amongst tight ends, but he's still behind Laporta. So I think that needs to be mentioned. Mm. And I'm sorry. I don't think Rasheed Rice is very good. And this is all about landing spots. And to me, I would rather, I'm happy for like Sky Moore owners that this is all that they have to deal with. The, the, the Chiefs wide receivers are an underrated Really bad group. I mean, I don't know who's good on that team, if, especially if Tony's unreliable. Yeah, I, I don't know if any of them are good. And, yeah, and, right. We don't know because uh, Tony has been unreliable from an injury perspective. Uh, Sky Moore, we're only one season in, but Sky Moore uh, <laughs> was a disappointment, certainly, for those sure. who drafted him. Uh, and And here we are pushing another you know, mid round wide receiver up in dynasty ADP. Uh, I mean, Sky Moore gained a ton feels of like value. Clyde Edwards Alaire. Well, we did it with Clyde Edwards. <laughs> I Alaire, know it feels certainly. the same way, right? Yeah. Uh, we did it with Miko Hardman, uh, even, yep, you know, exactly. who was another player like that looked like he might have that third round ADP and ended up as a borderline first rounder because of the landing spot. So, yeah, I think I think naming Rashi Rice there is a really good uh, a really good call, and I mean the Chiefs are going to hit on a wide receiver at some point, you would think, but their their recent track record doesn't Terrible. doesn't look good. Um, he's, he's my ele- my wide receiver eleven behind guys that aren't even on this list. Yeah, so you wouldn't take him in the second round at all. It sounds like I highly doubtful. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, one more. Uh, one more overvalued player for me, Hendon Hooker. I know he's twenty uh, third yeah. overall, almost the the last pick in this round. I'm still just not spending this pick on him. I mean, he's the guy when someone else in my rookie draft take takes him, especially if it's with a early to mid second round. It, it you know that's that's drawing the fist pump from me because <laughs> one you know somebody I like a little bit more is falling and. I mean, we've talked about all the reasons, the age, the injury, the landing spot is fine. Uh, Detroit, you know, we'll see. Maybe that's a, a year out situation, uh, but I, I don't think it's one to get excited about. And I don't think it's a, 
I don't think it's a sure thing that he's the 2024 starter either. So I'm just, I'm letting somebody else take Hendon hooker in my leagues. Yeah. Uh, I already, already mentioned that uh, Roshan Johnson was my guy as the undervalued pick. Um, yeah. I, I just really like, uh, I really like Josh downs. Um, he was a player who looked that. like yeah. a late first rounder uh, pre NFL draft, late first rounder and rookie drafts, I should say, and fell in the NFL draft further than expected, but I love the landing spot. Uh, after Michael Pittman, there, there's not much there uh, when it comes to the Colts receiving core. You know, Alec Pierce is fine. They've got a couple of big tight ends, but, uh, you know, JT's not going to catch the ball much. And I, I think Downs can step right in as that slot and uh, be Anthony Richardson's best friend. We've already heard uh, some some reports about Richardson and Downs, you know, working well together in, in these rookie camps and uh, already connecting and, and kind of forming that bond. I love to see that. I would consider Josh Downs. In, in fact, we I talked about Mingo at 16 overall. Here's Downs at 21 overall. I think those two should about, probably be flipped. I'm, I like Downs more in the early second rather than the late second round range. Yeah, and I think you said this earlier. You do like Downs more than Mingo. You just said the same thing, but – I don't even think you're considering the other way around on those two, right? No, no, not no, at all. I get it. I get it. Yeah. No, I do like the landing spot. I think it's a Richardson friendly target. I was shocked he fell as did he as much as he did in the NFL draft. So I mean a lot of dome games and you know things of that mm. nature. Not that that's a huge you know, component of this, but I'm with you. I would for the twenty first pick overall. Um, we, we talked about almost all of these guys, Matt, let me get your thoughts really quickly as we wrap up today on Marvin Mims, uh, fell mm -hmm. to the end of the third round, I believe, uh, or into the second round. Um, uh, Marvin Mims goes to the Denver Broncos, of course, a little crowded right now there with, mm -hmm. with Sutton and Judy. It seems like they've tried to move Sutton and, and haven't been, uh, able to do that yet. What's, uh, what's your outlook for Marvin Mims? I found it pretty telling that their first pick and Sean Payton's first pick was a wide receiver and it yeah. was this wide oh, yeah. receiver, you know? So I thought that was a real feather in his cap. Um, two players we didn't, that aren't on this list. I have ahead of him, but like barely, I mean, Jaden Reed and Cedric Tillman, but I do have him ahead of rice. I'm a fan. And I do think the writing on the wall for maybe even Hamler and Patrick, but certainly Judy and certainly Sutton, is leaving Denver. You know what I mean? Like, mm. uh, I, I think Sean Payton wants his guys and none of them are his guys. I mean, just, mm. it's, it's a stupid little thing, but he goes and trades for Troutman, you know, and he drafts yeah. men, yeah. you know, like I want my guys, I'm in charge here now. Get these old riffraff out of here, you know? So I think that's good for him. Specifically Sutton and Judy, would you be targeting them in dynasty right now with a possible new start? Judy, yes. Sutton, no. Uh, yeah. I just think Judy's a better player. He's a better separator. I don't have the d data in front of me, but I bet he t is much better in reception perception than Sutton. Sutton's just kind of a monotone athlete that's older than you think. And his, I think his story might be written and Judy's might just be maybe getting started with a fresh start somewhere. Yeah, makes sense. That'll do it for today's show. Please make sure you download and subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Remember to follow the show on at locked on dynasty. Follow Matt at Williamson NFL and I'm Ryan MC 23. We'll be back next time with more locked on dynasty.